Would you like to see how I doubled my storage space and went from these mixed match shelves to these beauties with just these tools? Then stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to my studio. We're doing something a little different today. I'm going to do a little carpentry work here and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show some of you guys how to do a really nice, simple set of shelves with very minimal tools. So you can see I've got a little bit of a hodgepodge of shelves going back here. And this is because my art studio has kind of grown up organically over the last few years. And I've kind of added on a little bit here, a little bit there. But I'm wanting to streamline this a little bit, make it a little neater, give myself a little more storage right here where I'm using stuff, get some stuff out of my back room and make it so it's all accessible to me and I can kind of see what's going on all at one time. And it just, I am somebody who creates better when I have a clean, clear, organized space around me. So a little bit of everything. So I have a lot of very high-end expensive uh, tools for woodworking because I build the uh, countertops that I make, uh, that I do resin countertops out of. So I build those from scratch. And I also do some light and uh, woodworking besides that. So I am very fortunate that I have some great tools at my disposal. But I'm in Chicagoland and it is negative 30 degrees with wind chill right now outside Fahrenheit. And I don't want to go out in my garage. <laughs> so I'm doing this with what I can do right here in my studio in the warmth and comfort of my own home. So let's talk about the lumber first. So this is um, a one by 12. So uh, I'm in the US, so I'm talking in inches. So this is one inch thick by 12 inches wide. And I am using a board that is uh, six foot long. So I got this from Menards. If you have a Menards near you, I like them a lot for lumber that is for woodworking that you're going to see. You can get stuff at Home Depot and Lowe's and some other places, but I think Menards, at least in my area, always has a better selection of this type of lumber than uh, Home Depot or anybody else does. Until you get into like your mom and pop lumber shops that are gonna have a lot more specialty sort of stuff. And if you're doing some finished pieces that are gonna be like show pieces, that's definitely the way to go. These are more utilitarian and I'm going for a little more of a rustic industrial sort of look. So I don't need a super fancy wood to do that. This is gonna be perfect. So for this one, this is a pine board and it's there in between, I think they call it a quality board. Um, they have one that's lower end and you'll get a lot bigger knots and you'll get more splitting and things like that. And it's just a very small price jump up to go to their in-between board. And then they have another step up that you will have almost no knots. You, it's going to be beautiful, beautiful lumber, but it's almost triple the price as this in-between board. So uh, again, for this type of project, this is, is perfect. Um, so I brought this home. Actually, I brought five of these home. And I did a very simple sanding. So I just used a palm sander here with 220 sandpaper on it. Now, if you don't have one of these and you can use these little uh, sponge sanders also, you can get those. These aren't very price effective. So if you're gonna do any more sanding at any point in your lifetime, just get one of these. They're like five bucks off of Amazon and you get these little round uh, pieces that come on and off as you wear through them. So I did a light sanding. Um, again, I'm not going for, you know, award-winning woodworking here. So I di didn't care if there was a little bit of texture left and, and things like that. I just wanted to knock back the, um, the grit a little bit. And also I like to always go along my edges a little bit. Sorry, you can't see that in the video. I like to get these sharp edges just to make sure that there aren't going to be any splinters coming off. So you, uh, it, it's literally maybe five minutes per board is what I spent sanding. So then I used a product called um, Stain and Poly in One. So I usually use uh, Minwax brands 
stain, stain and poly in one and I really like theirs. I didn't have enough of that to do this project so when I was at Menards um, they don't have Minwax, they have Varathane so I picked this Varathane up. I don't like this as much as the Minwax so I'm going to recommend the Minwax product that's a stain and poly in one and it's just a very simple thing to use. Um, it goes, it's very forgiving. You just use a brush, brush it on, uh, make sure you don't have any drips and what I do is I kind of uh, give myself some uh, room to make mistakes with that. So I look at my board and decide which side of the board I want up or showing on the shelving. And I start with the other side. Okay. So I, I brush that side on, I turn it over, I brush the good side and clean up the, the edges. And that way, if you get any drips that kind of roll under, it's rolling under the side that you're not going to see anyway. So you, the top side is your pretty finished side. Again, if I was going for something more refined, I would spend a lot more time on this, but for an industrial looking shelving piece that's gonna go in my sh uh, art studio here, I am totally fine with having little imperfections here and there. So I did that after the first coat, I again took my 220 sandpaper and just did a light scuff sanding. Because uh, what happens a lot of times uh, when you put your first layer of whatever you're treating your wood with, and it really is just about ubiquitous with all stains or uh, protective coatings, is that first coat you put down is going to pop the grain a little bit. So you'll get a little bit of a texture. So I, again, it took me less than five minutes per board. You just real quickly scuff that off um, till it's at a point that you're happy with it. And then I do a second coat. Uh, these are what they what you call buildable. So if you want a darker color, you could do a third coat if you want. But I was really happy with two coats of this. And this is a walnut color stain, which I really like. It's kind of a nice warm um, color. So that's what I did to prep that's my where we're at now. And I have staged a few things to make this next step a little easier to explain. So this is going to be the bottom shelf. And you can see here, I have already attached these uh, casters to the bottom. And these are locking casters, so I can make sure that it's not gonna easily roll around. So I have two in the middle and then two on each end for a total of six. And then the other thing I have here is I have these uh, floor flanges. And I'll put a, a link below so that you can figure that out. And I've already pre-marked pre-measured the center of my board here. So what I have going on is I have two of these posts at the end, on each end, and then I'm just doing one in the middle to support the middle so these don't sag. If you do a larger piece, say like an eight foot board, you'll wanna put two of these. Uh, again, just adding extra support so you don't get saggy shelves in the middle. Four foot piece, you should be okay without a center post, okay? So I'm gonna bring you in, show you what I'm doing here. Sorry, one last thing. Um, I am just using a very cheap uh, cordless drill. I keep this up in my studio for mixing paints and things like that. Um, you do not need a cordless drill for this. It just makes your life a little bit simpler. You can just use a regular screwdriver. Uh, this wood is soft enough. Um, if you're using a good wood screw, it'll, be pretty easy to put these in by hand. It's just going to take a little longer and a little more muscle. Okay, so I'm going to bring you in, show you exactly what I'm doing, and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have this centered, and you can see here, I'm going to do it with this just so, first, just so you can see how easy it is. And I like to press in just a little bit to get it started. There we go. Now, if you are using an electric drill, you do want to make sure that you have um, that you don't over do this because this wood is soft enough that it'll be easy to strip out the the hole. So I just do it nice and slow. There we go. Now 
Okay. Now I have my leg here. So this is pipe and another flange. These are called nipples actually. Um, and I'm just gonna screw this on and screw that in. Okay, now this is the bottom of my shelf. So I'm gonna zoom back out again and show you how I put all of this together. Okay, so turning this over, so this is the bottom shelf, it's top of the bottom shelf. And now I turn this over and easy peasy. And then I'm going to repeat that for all five of, of these posts, okay? Here we are. Now, you are going to repeat that same step for all of the shelves. You're going to secure the legs onto the bottom of the shelf, flip it over, screw it into the shelf below until you get all the way done. Last thing I'm going to show you is I pre-drilled some holes in here. Now, you don't have to do that. Um, but with how close I'm doing this to the edge, it's just a little security. And what I'm doing is I have these eye hooks here and I am simply going to screw these in. I have one in the center and one on each of the ends. And a little trick to make that easier is just grab your screwdriver. And then what these are for is I have a half inch thick dowel here. And I'm just gonna feed that through. And that is gonna help keep things from easily sliding off the back. And because I secured this so close to the edge, um, I really don't lose any shelf space here. So this works out really perfect for this. And I'm gonna do that on each of the shelves also. Um, I, where I'm putting these in my studio, it's a hard place to kind of film at, so I'm not going to show you the entire process of putting these together. And I actually have to stop here because if I keep putting more boards on here, I won't be able to get it up the stairs. So I'm gonna bring you back and show you after I have it installed what it looks like, okay? Here we are, and I just wanted to show you the final product of my shelving project. I am so happy with how this turned out and how much neater and more organized my space is. I was able to get a lot of stuff that I had in kind of random places out so that I can see everything. And so I don't keep buying stuff that I already have because I don't think I have any. <laughs> so yeah, very happy with this. I hope it inspired you or gave you some useful information as always if you have any questions please leave them in the drop down below and i'm always happy to answer for you guys have a great day take care